Hey everybody, welcome to Sports Etc. We're coming to you from Gator Sports Pub, just like we do every week. I'm Andrew, this is Chris. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. That's right, it is Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. Uh, Mexico's uh, Battle of Puebla, I believe. Uh, their Independence Day. Recognizes it's the way to put it. As, as their Independence Day, absolutely. So in honor of that, uh, what we're going to do is actually, uh, we're going to do today's episode in Spanish. ¿Dónde está el baño? Tu madre está caliente. Uh, Ensename tus tetas. I don't know what that means, but it sounds dirty. It is. You can Google that. Well, I think we've kind of covered our extent of Spanish. Oh, uh, tequila. Oh, tequila. Mas tequila. tequila. Mas, Mas tequila. tequila. Good Shout old. out for Sammy Hagar there. <laughs> All right, so let's dive into what we're going to talk about in English because, well, if we tried to do Spanish, we're not only going to confuse ourselves, we're going to confuse you guys a yeah. little bit probably end up getting shanked or something. <laughs> Speaking of Cinco de Mayo, I did celebrate a little bit earlier this week by singing another brick in the wall. Oh, that sounds totally tremendous. All we need is a hundred billion more bricks in the wall. All right. Uh, moving on, though, we've got some uh, topics to talk about this week. Uh, what's the biggest one right now, Chris? Well, the biggest thing I'd have to say right now is last uh, Friday night. Sorry, we film Saturday morning, so it's last night to us. Yeah. But time the, travel. The Carolina hurricanes, as I saw, the weather forecast in Long Island was for a hurricane with sweeping winds. Absolutely. The Carolina hurricanes swept the New York Islanders. Four game streak, and you know it's actually the very first time that there's been a team that has not first, ninth time. Ninth time that a team has swept the first series and then got swept. Yes, it's the ninth time in NHL history that that's happened. Okay. Now. We'll see what happens. Carolina is the first team to book their ticket to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yep. Now, will they be pay, playing Columbus or Boston? That series is sitting 2-2 on Saturday morning as we record. They do play tonight, so one team is going to have a lead, and we'll see who's going to be joining Carolina in that Eastern Conference Final. Wouldn't it be crazy if it was Columbus versus Carolina for the Eastern Conference Final? Nobody would have picked that. No, no, there's... If someone bet on that in Vegas, good on you because you're yeah. probably, probably rich. 200 to 1 odds or something. If it happens, it hasn't happened yet. But for time travelers, it just only within a couple days. Personally, I think <laughs> the big thing to look at is whoever comes out of the East may not matter because we've got some pretty strong teams left in the West. Yeah. I think Dallas, like on Friday night, they played St. Louis really well. Um, ended up winning the game 5 to 2, taking a 3 2 series lead in that. They'll play tonight. So who knows, that series could end. Could be all over for, for St. Louis, we'll have to see. Come on down here to Gators to check that out. It's a great place to watch hockey, I, any sport, really. A huge, big screen behind us. You can't quite see it uh, right now, but uh, this is our, our third and hopefully final week where we're coming to you, you know, straight from the Samsung phone. Uh, we do hope to have our professional camera equipment back uh, by next I week. I hate thieves. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we will be getting that back shortly. But yeah, come on down to Gators. Huge screens. They've got great food and drink specials. And the quality and service is top notch. I know this sounds like a plug, and it probably is. But, uh, you know, it does have my own personal endorsement. I do love coming here. So. I love coming down here, too. That's why we film the show here every week. Absolutely. Now, do you think Dallas is the team to beat in the West? Or what do you think? Do you, you, you know, I think that the team to beat is going to end up being the Sharks. Um, not only do I think that they do have far more depth than Colorado, although McKinnon is, re is really on a streak here with his, uh, uh, just the way that he's played. You know, he's been playing physical, he's been giving it his all, and, you know, he's been putting a lot of points on the board too. So I don't think Colorado can be discounted. However, I do have a grudge against them now because they beat the Flames, and, you know, I hold lifelong grudges. So I am hoping that Colorado goes down uh, faster than Stormy Daniels did on the press. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Well, we'll see how that plays out. I think San Jose's got a great team, and I, like you, I'd like to see Colorado lose just because, well, they beat us. So coming up in a little bit, we're going to talk about the boycott in women's hockey where 200 of the best players have banded together for a specific reason. As well, we are going to talk about injuries in minor sports and what you can maybe do to try to prevent and limit them. That's right, it's becoming a big problem. We're going to uh, go over those topics and so much more. But first, a word from our sponsor. So 
So welcome back everybody. As I said a little earlier, in women's hockey this week, 200 of the best players in the world have banded together to boycott their league because they feel they deserve, which I 100% agree with, health benefits for when they get hurt and they also deserve compensation for the game. There's play women yeah. out there playing this game for, I've heard, anywhere from 2000 to $10,000 a year. Correct, correct. Yeah, for the NWHL and for the now defunct CWHL, uh, players were earning salaries of between 2000 to 10000 per year. Now, of course, for the majority of them, they would have, you know, some other job that they do throughout the year. Uh, but, I mean, that that's just abysmal. It's almost insulting. And just to add insult to injury, they have to purchase their own health insurance and whatnot uh, on top of that. Like you said, they're putting their bodies on the line for the entertainment of the general public. And uh, I really think that these teams do owe to them to, uh, you know, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. You know, j just, just be decent, right? That's, I think, I really think all they're looking for. I think if you're going to try to call yourself a professional league, you need to take care of your players. Absolutely. It, medical benefits, these guys get hurt, they get banged up. You get a knee injury that take, puts you off your feet for six to eight weeks, you still need to survive. Mm -hmm. um, compensate these players properly, they're out there for our entertainment, and there's a reason that, unfortunately I hate to say it, the CW, sort of the Women's NHL League here in Canada failed because they didn't treat their players right. And a lot of it, in my opinion, comes down to marketing as well. Right. They're not marketing themselves. So if leagues can work together with their players mm -hmm. to protect their players and market them, you know, people will go. I've watched women's hockey. I love watching women's hockey. It's Absolutely. a great, fast game. It, it's one of the most exciting sports uh, in the Olympics. You know, sometimes even some of the women's games have been more exciting than some of the men's games, you know. With oh, the definitely, players. definitely. Um, so, you know, there's definitely an extremely high caliber of play there. And, you know, like I said, you know, they're, they're putting themselves on the line. Um, they really do, uh, they, they really do deserve that. And they deserve better salary than two to ten grand. Come on, you know. If the owners are going to be charging for tickets, they're going to be making money. They really owe it to these players to, to give them their fair cut of it as well. I mean, I'm hoping that... Uh things continue going in their favor. I know the NHLPA has actually put out a release stating that they are supporting them. Now they, yeah, physic yeah. they can't financially or get totally involved because of legal reasons, I'm sure, but it's great to see that the biggest hockey league in the world is saying, you know what, we see what you're doing, we respect it, and we do have your back as much as we can. Yeah, for the for the players' association, not the league specifically, yes. that it put out that statement. Uh, but yes, it was. Uh, you know, some have said uh, certainly. You know, on on Twitter and whatnot. You know, the discussion is that it may have been a little bit wishy washy. Uh, you know, one person had said, you know, it's about as thick as potato water. Uh, but uh, okay. But you know, they they certainly did make a statement. You know, they they did have their uh, their backs with that. And, you know, I mean, for me personally, you know, I, I I've got you, ladies. Uh, certainly. Do fully back your uh, your fight with this, and you know I, I really think that they're going to go somewhere with it. I can't see the NWHL, you know, the only remaining North American Women's Professional Hockey League. I cannot see them ignoring this. Two hundred of the best players in the world just sitting out a season. I can't see that happening. So it'll, it'll I, I think there's going to be something coming down the pipe for sure. Yeah, it will crush them if they lose. You lose your best athletes, you lose the half the entertainment value. Oh, absolutely. You're going to be basically watching beer league hockey, and, well, people aren't going to pay for that. No, no, you're not going to sell any tickets, that's for sure. But also talking about money in sports, we have mentioned the Canadian Football League is still in discussions with the collective bargaining that's agreement. Right. They're still at the table. They have been talking. There's more meetings scheduled this week. So let's cross our fingers and hope that they can get things done. I do have to give a shout out though to Commissioner Ambrose because this past Thursday was the Canadian Football League draft. And when he was on TSN, one of the panelists asked him about the collective bargaining agreement Thursday night. And he said, you know what, tonight's about the new players coming into our league. It, we're bringing in new talent. We're focusing on these guys. I don't want to talk about the CBA today. That's for another day. And with the draft, That's we had fair. a local Calgarian get taken first overall. Unfortunately, right. he went to Toronto, but Shane Richards was taken. Didn't he go to the same high school you go to? Absolutely. Uh, my high school, Crescent Heights High School, go Cowboys, go. Uh, they uh, have actually churned out quite a few notable folks over the years. Ken Taylor, of course, who helped with the uh, Canadian hostage situation back in Iran. Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong fame. Nice. 
Paul Brandt, Canadian country singer, and, uh, and now Sheen. Of course, I was in the mix there too, class of 99. But, uh, you know, so there's various levels of success that have come out of the school, I guess. Yeah, we'll leave I'm it saying. at various <laughs> levels of success. <laughs> Well, good for him. You know, first overall, that is a huge accomplishment. So good on you, Shane. We're really proud of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see a local boy get drafted that high. It shows that minor sports in Calgary are doing well. Yeah. We're, bring, we're getting great athletes coming out of this city. And speaking of minor sports, coming up, Andrew and Tyler are going to be interviewing me as a sports expert to find out what my opinion is on what you can do to get your kids or yourself prepared to try to prevent injury in sports. Absolutely. It's a big thing nowadays, especially with the way that uh, medical science has advanced. You know, concussions are a big thing that a lot of people are talking about in sports, both pro and amateur. And Chris, you know, I understand you've been a football coach for many years and uh, very involved in local sports. So we will have that interview coming up uh, a little bit later in the show. Here's the rant. One thing that really bugs me is when I see posts online on social media or even stories that are edited and put out by media organizations and there are glaring errors on them, especially misspellings. Now I get it if it's a word that is not commonly used, but I mean for things like the there, there, there and other such ones like that, there's really no reason with spell check, with online dictionaries that People should be making these errors. It's egregious and it really makes my skin crawl. That's my rant for the week. Kick off your weekend early at Red Crown's Pub with karaoke Thursday nights. Once you're all warmed up, come back Friday night for Name That Task Track, Name That Tune with a twist. Win great prizes from local sponsors, including a $25 gift certificate for Red Crown's Pub. Has entertainment at Red Crown's Pub. We'll see you there. Welcome back to Sports Etc. Everybody, we are back here. We're going to be interviewing Chris about the uh, local sports scene, and not only that, about ways to uh, prevent and mitigate injuries uh, locally for both professional and amateur sports. We are joined, of course, by Tyler from Taz Entertainment. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the show. Good to be here again. All right. Uh, so, Chris, as mentioned before the break, you have been coaching football locally for many years. Uh, so, I'm sure that uh, you know you've probably, unfortunately, been witness to some injuries on the field. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, just to give a little bit of background about myself, I did play football. I wasn't able to play bantam football in this city because I was too big. Um, when, you? I, when I was a kid, yeah, you, if you were over a certain weight, you couldn't play because, you know, the football, a game football where you have linemen that are designed for big people, I don't know, I, it, it's kind of something. <laughs> they, just didn't, they didn't want you to hurt the other kids. I guess so, <laughs> I guess so. But, yeah, he I, scares I, the other children. <laughs> <laughs> I played at a very high level of, like, I, in high school. Unfortunately, I never made it to the post-secondary level due to injuries. But then I decided to give back to the game by coaching. I tried. I did coach a little bit right after high school at my alma mater, Forest Lawn High School. Uh, it was a little hard as a former player to step right into coaching. So I took a few years off, and then I got involved in Calgary minor football. Coached peewee football, bantam, and midget for years. Moved on to coaching the Calgary Rage, the women's tackle football team, who Andrew and I actually tonight uh, have the honor to announce the game. So that's going to be fun. Uh, so you've been coaching lots of football for many, many years. Uh, you know a lot. I mean, one of the reasons why uh, when we decided we wanted to do a sports show and we brought you into the conversation in the first place because you were so knowledgeable about just everything in general, not just about football. I mean, you follow hockey, you follow... You follow, you've been actively as a player and as a coach. So over that time, undoubtedly, you have experienced injuries. You, you had mentioned yourself that you had injuries that prevented you from being able to move on to play at a more pro level. You've probably witnessed lots of other injuries, yeah? Oh, definitely. I've, I've, unfortunately, I've seen some pretty horrific injuries. And uh... any, any what, 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 was the, what was the biggest injury that you ever witnessed in, in pro sports or while during your time doing things? The most, I'd have to say the most heartbreaking injury I've, I ever dealt with was when I was coaching Pee Wee football. It was like our second or third practice of the season and a first year player planted wrong and broke his leg uh, right in front of me. Wow. Uh, the kid was 11 years old and I, I heard the snap and it's just 
just as a person, it's heartbreaking, but also yeah. as a coach, you're developing these, this relationship with these young men and women. This um, poor kid is never going to want to play football again, right? Yeah. Like, like he, that's did, his... he did come back. Did he? Well, that's had, good. But it was, you know, that's tough. it's amazing. Third that, practice. <laughs> that, you know, I got to give credit out to all these coaches and stuff out there and the training that I had as well. When that situation happened, instead of panicking and freaking out, all of us just went into, okay, we know what to do here. We need to get him help. We need to get, call 911, get the paramedics here, talk to the parents, because not only did we, did we have to make sure that the child was calm, you gotta talk to those parents. Their, their kid just got their kids hurt. Are, they're freaked out. I, I could just imagine my wife if, if you know, my son or my daughter, who both played soccer, uh, not football, but they both uh, have been in soccer, uh, they both do martial arts, uh, and they have had minor injuries from both of those. Nothing major has ever happened. Um, we go, we buy our equipment, we do whatever we need to do. The reason we're having this conversation in the first place is because you mentioned to me that there are some specific things that can be done to help prevent injury in the first place. And so what I thought would be really good for everybody who uh, watches our show or for anybody who is... Um, uh, into sports, you know, whether you're for yourself or for your kids, you know, what are some of the things that people really need to be conscious of as they go to play sports and put their kids in sports to make sure that these types of injuries don't happen? Well, the first thing I'd say would be proper equipment. Uh, what I mean by that, I'll, I'll use football and soccer as an example. Football cleats and soccer cleats are completely different. Soccer is designed where you're running more straightforward, uh, kicking at the ball so you don't necessarily need as much ankle support. You take a sport like football where you're doing a lot of lateral movement, uh, you have to have your ankle support and your cleats. So you need to make sure that you do have the proper equipment. That's why scientists have spent hours and hours and months, whatever it may be, developing these and they're continually developing yeah, hours of research that went into your professional well, sport. Well, it's probably more than hours. <laughs> you know, you know, I know what I mean. <laughs> probably many, many thousands many, many, of hours. They, they, but absolutely. nonetheless, I mean, there is yeah. a lot of time investment. And, and, that, and that's, and that's monetary interesting. Monetary investment, too. And, exactly. And that's interesting because, like, for a lot of parents who may not necessarily really understand a difference, right? If, if my son plays soccer one year and I go buy those soccer cleats and then he decides he wants to do football and those soccer cleats happen to still fit him, as a parent, I might think to myself, well, cleats are cleats, here we go, right? And the reality is, no, there's a difference between football and soccer cleats, and you got to make sure that you're wearing the right ones because otherwise you have the potential of getting injured. Well, even the cleat themselves, the part, cleat, cleated part of the shoe is different. A football cleat will have more cleats than a soccer cleat for grip because in football, a lot of situations, you're making contact, you're pushing, so you don't want to have six or seven cleats you want to have 15 to 20 on the bottom of the shoe so that it can grip the ground mm. and that way you're not going to have by sliding wrong you know you're never going to 100 percent prevent injuries by equipment right. but there's enough technology out there that you can limit chances mm. what, um, what are some of the other things that we could do for preventing injury one thing i've seen a lot of kids and adults that i've coached over the years Hydrate and proper eating. Uh, you don't want to go into a practice where you've just had a small snack because you're burning calories, you're burning that energy. And as you get hungry, your mindset changes. You don't think straight, you're not as focused, which could open you up to injuries. Because if you're not paying attention to what you're doing and then you get, for say, in a, you're doing a play in football, you get blindsided because you're not actually paying attention to what you're doing. Your body's not prepared for a hit, you're gonna get hurt. That's why you see a, non, a lot of non-contact sports, some of these brutal injuries that happen is because, well, I'm not gonna get hit. You have to have the mindset that yes, it can happen. Yeah. You know, in any sport you can. You take a sport, basketball, that they say it's not violent. I don't know if anyone, any of you out there played, but I played down in the paint. I was, I was playing basketball with my son just yesterday and it was very violent. Oh, you're, 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 bo you're boxing people out, you're pushing around, yeah. and you're, there is contact. Now, yeah. you're not having a big open field hit like you They're not tackling you, no. but yeah, you, people, I, people fall all the time in basketball. I've seen, I've seen people you're drive into the basket and you hit and you slide into the stand. I almost called it the end zone, but it slide into the stands or the bleachers or whatever. I mean, any, any time you're 
you're going fast and hard, <laughs> you have a chance of getting hurt. <laughs> okay, yeah. How, how, how fast and hard do you have to go, though? Well, well, you know, it probably is different for every person. No, fair enough. <laughs> but, I mean, we're just trying to get the thrust of it. That's right. That's oh, right. We're trying guys, to. You guys. We're trying to get the gist. See of what the, I have to put up with. The gist of it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Back. Moving back right to, along. Yeah. Chris, anything else that we could do to make sure that we're preventing any injuries for um, sports? Or one thing, as any athlete, uh, whether you're being coached professionally or not, preparation and listening. Um, you need to. If there's people there that are experts or just coaching you in general, you need to have the attitude of taking what they tell you and help like I know I like I say I've coached for years but I'm no expert on 100% coaching I would go to coaching clinics every year do research online to try to better myself as a coach so that I could better my players one thing I notice is attitude a lot of players you get that ego of hey I'm better than everybody else that's where you're going to trip yourself up you need to be able to be like no I'm I'm going to be a team player I'm going to learn learn systems in whatever sport because every sport has systems. You know, this is how it, you do things. I can use football as an example. And it's really up to the coach, sorry to jump in there, but it's really up to the coach to try to foster that type of teamwork uh, into children, right? And I know that there's a transition as well. My kids are quite young, and so over the years watching them play soccer, there's no teamwork. These kids are just chasing the ball. Well, right? yeah. But yeah. then as time goes by, you know, you start teaching them how to pass, but they don't. And then as they get a little bit older yet, all of a sudden you can see, you know, it's so interesting how the connections begin to happen. And sports is just a really interesting way. You can watch how children develop by watching them play sports. Because they, they, all of a sudden understanding changes and they start playing the game differently and passing and things like that become more important. So. Well, yeah, when you get kids who believe and buy in, you hear that in sports, the buy in. Right. I can in say, anything, really. But in yeah. anything. I, I can say from personal example with football, I remember coaching a peewee team where I was putting in a pretty complex system for them. It was actually over their age limit, if you think about it. But you know, as I was putting it in, it's like, you know guys, this you guys are peewees, but this is bantam level stuff. But the reason I'm teaching it to you is because I know you can do it and I believe in you. The moment you use that believe word and they start to believe, amazing things will happen. I had teams where, you know, they would, run through a wall for me. Why? Because I put enough faith in them and I committed to them. Anything in sports comes down to commitment. It really is a, a, a mental game and if your mind isn't right, I guess, you know, not only can you not win, but you really, it's hard to avoid injury. So you gotta keep your head in the game, eat right, proper equipment. I think that's all really good advice for everybody. So. As, as Red Green would say, keep your stick on the ice. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and if they don't call you handsome, they should at least call you handy. But no, I, no, wait, wait, that's handsy. Yo, I, yeah, that's... I would like to say one thing that. to parents out there, though, that are putting their kids in sports. I know winning is important, but compliment your children on the little things. You know what? They could be out there and get completely defeated in a game because they're just outplayed. But you know what? Find the four or five things that they did great and focus on that. Don't focus on the negative. I never did as a coach. I would teach my players what they did wrong, but I wouldn't harp on my players and be like, you guys are not doing this, you can't blah, blah, blah. Positivity, positivity, positivity. Why? Because it's, then we will develop really, positive individuals as they grow up. It's really That's about it. coaching, isn't it? You know, it, 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 it's, it's how we lead in a way that inspires and motivates, right? And if you criticize and come down on people for doing poorly as opposed to say hey you know what maybe this wasn't great but here's how we can be good right and that that subtle shift from you're bad to this is how it can be good is is a very important step for anybody and really in any type of leadership all types and of sports life. sports is such a great example and there's a reason why you know in in life and in business and places there's so many sports analogies because it really is such a good uh, example, you know, what works in sports really does work in life. So uh, I think that uh, we got some very good advice from our man Chris here today. Thanks, bud. Absolutely. No and I mean, this is a great segue to announce 
that uh, starting very soon we're going to be having a new segment here on oh, Sports I'm so excited et about cetera. this. Sports etc. I, I, I am excited but nervous at the same time. He's excited. This is going to be the <laughs> expert. He's the expert. It's called Ask the Expert. Uh, no E, right? Don't forget. It's just Sports X. X. Etc. I do All it, but right? I only have one arm. It doesn't look good. <laughs> and he's he's the why, uh, and you're gonna ask him questions because he's the expert. And so if you guys have any questions for Chris, uh, sports related or otherwise, you know, every single su uh, Sunday he's gonna come on the show and he's gonna do the best he can to answer your questions. It's called Ask the Expert. It's coming to Sports Etc. starting next week. So make sure you tune in and check that out and if you guys have questions for Chris that you want answered all you got to do is comment to this video uh, or you can also send us a direct message on Facebook you know sports etc on Facebook you can send us a direct message there uh, and or we even will Twitter or Instagram yeah, as well same absolutely hands. same handles send us those questions and we will collate those and then Chris will do the best he can to answer those for you every single week so that's gonna be a lot of fun Absolutely. And and, uh, and what else is going on next week here? Well, next week we do have, a, as they would say on 70s and 80s sitcoms, a very special episode. I can't wait. We're going to be visiting FanFest down in McMahon Stadium. Uh, Calgary Stampeders put this on every year, and it's a great time. A lot of or interactive exhibits. Uh, you can have your picture taken with the Grey Cup. Uh, Which was players. just redone. They added another ring to the bottom. It looks beautiful from the photos. I can't wait to see it. You know what looks most beautiful on that is, of course, the 2018, uh, 2018 Grey, Cup, Grey Champions. Cup Champions, Calgary Stampeders on there. Uh, so we're going to be coming to you from McMahon Stadium next week. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned for that. Uh, well, sports etc. on location. We're gonna. Uh -huh. We will be doing an update from the fun. Andrew and I hope to have this announcing the Calgary Rage home opener. Absolutely, that's going to be our etc. segment next week. So uh, yeah, the, tonight, Saturday, May fourth, when we film this. May the fourth uh, be with you, because that's it's Saturday for us. But happy Cinco de Mayo for the rest of you. That's right. Lots of, <laughs> lots of stuff going on and this if, And if you're watching this after May 5th, then shame on you for waiting so long. Yeah. So subscribe already. Yeah, would subscribe. You? That way you get the uh, the notification from YouTube every time it goes live. I know I get that. That's why I know to, to share it to you social media. You can turn media. them off. But, but, uh, but we will be coming don't. to you from McMahon don't. Stadium <laughs> next week. Uh, aside from that, anything else we wanted to cover today, Chris? Well, remember, we are giving away that uh, limited edition Jerome McGinley retirement t-shirt. Andrew actually has one on right now that's close to it, except the one we have is red. Yeah, that so one's this, red, this one's white, because I was in the nosebleeds. So this is what... <laughs> hashtag cheap seats. You know, you can win that t-shirt. Remember, we're giving it away to our subscribers or those who comment. Well, both. You have to, well, subscri both. You have to subscribe and comment, mm -hmm. and, and we ask that you all please share sports, etc., because we are trying to claim the name. We That's are right. so close to getting to 100 subscribers, and once we have 100 subscribers, then we can claim youtube.com slash sports, etc. Again, we're so close, so share this episode with all of your friends and family so that they can find out about uh, the fun sports that are going on, uh, you know, the quick update for the non-avid sports enthusiast, plus, of course, we, guy, we give you guys fun stuff uh, along the way as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed tuning in today. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you have a great week. I'm looking forward to your questions, and I can't wait. Maybe I'll ask a couple as well. I'll submit them anonymously. Okay. <laughs> I actually do have a question for you right now. Um, do you uh, do you think that uh, these red pumps oh are my normal? Call go, a doctor. Go to a doctor. Go to a doctor. See I'm you not guys. answering Thanks that. For, All right. We'll have see you next for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Take care.